Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you three ways, three very simple ways to do a watercolor background uh, that you can do your hand lettering on. So I have a few supplies here. First of all, you need some water-based pens. I have the Tombow pens. You need some water. A spray water is good, but any kind of a spray. I have the Tombow Spray Mister. I have watercolor paper cut up into sizes. And we're going to also play with some cardstock. So I have regular heavyweight white cardstock. The other thing that's super important to use for these techniques is a palette. So I have, what is a palette? It's just a piece of plastic and I have the Tombow Blending Palette which has a white side which is nice but it's not see-through and you'll see what that's all about in a minute. So it has to be super, I mean it can be a piece of plastic, anything that you can uh, put your Tombow uh, or your watercolor markers onto, scribble onto. And you can also use something like this, just a sandwich baggie. So let us get started. The first thing you have to kind of figure out is your your color scheme and this is just playtime. So basically you're going to choose a few colors. You can see here there's blues, there's a little bit of purple, there's a couple of greens. Here there's pinks and purple and blue and in this one I have browns, yellows blue, and blues which might seem like an odd combination but it turns out to be actually very attractive. Okay, so the first simple way you can create the watercolor background is by, I'll just use this blending palette, is by scribbling onto your palette like this and I will choose these colors. So I have a bluey turquoise, the brown and a gold and a yellow. And I'm using this white palette so hopefully you can just see better. And I'm going to scribble onto and notice how I'm using the side of the pen. So don't use the tip of your brush pen, you want to preserve that tip. And this is totally a playtime thing. This is something that requires uh, a bit of relaxed uh, freedom and, you know, an expectation that anything could happen with your blending of the colors. And then you will discover which colors you like which colors you don't like, which colors blend well, which colors look muddy. All right, and so then after this point, what I'm going to do is I will spray. Now think about your, your surface below. I don't wor I'm not worried about this paper underneath. So you're going to spray, but keep in mind what's around you. And you're going to create a, quite a bit of water. You want to see those water droplets on here. You see? Okay. That looks pretty. Now I can either place this face down or you could flip this over and put your watercolor paper on top. So uh, let's do it this way. Now I recommend moving it a bit otherwise you're going to get dots. And let's go here. And you want to be careful, you don't want it to get too muddy. And I'm just going to turn it over and pick up a little bit of this. See if these colors are blending in there, it's going to get muddy. So now you can see the vibrancy of it and if you like it or not, you want to increase, put more ink down if you do want it to be more vibrant. You can also pick up your paper towel and you can lightly dab and remove some of the water pieces that you don't like water pieces. Some of the water uh, pools of water that you don't like and then you let it dry. Now it seems a little bit warped but you can heat, dry, heat set it. I usually let mine dry and the other thing you can do is you can let this dry and you can then layer on more color afterwards. Okay so just keep that in mind. Now let's try a different technique. Oh you do need some a towel or a rag to clean up. So that is the first technique where you put the water onto a pal uh, sorry the pen the ink on the palette you add water and then you place your watercolor onto the watercolor paper. So another thing you can do is you can take your piece of watercolor paper I'll put it here 
And this time I'm going to choose uh, some other colors. Let's choose some blues and greens. And I'm going to place this down on here. Uh, once again, using the side of the pen. And it's experimentation. Where are you going to put your color down? You can see I'm not mixing my colors. I do want them to be separate on the palette. Then this time, I'm, instead of putting water onto my palette, I am going to wet my watercolor paper. Now notice I'm doing this with watercolor paper, not with cardstock. We'll, we'll play with the cardstock in a minute. So I've got this really covered nice and wet with the uh, water and I don't know I can't see if I missed any spots and then I'm going to take my palette that has all these colors on it and I'm going to place it down and move it a bit and you come out with this so you can see the different kinds of colors you get and the vibrancy with the different markers Right, isn't that pretty? The other thing you can do if you have a lot of water is you can let it run and move and tilt your paper. This is why in general I don't tape my paper down, but you can use removable tape, painter's tape or washi tape, and you can paint, uh, sorry, tape down your, um, your piece. So do I like this? I, I do. I don't really want these little rivulets, so I'm gonna dab at my rivulets. Is that, is that a word? Well, I'm going to make it a word. Pick those up and again let this let this dry. There. That's really quite pretty. And I will move that to the side. That is number two technique, wetting your paper first. So once again, I want to emphasize this is a process that you play around with and experiment. And the last technique I'll show you is applying the pens directly to a piece of watercolor paper. Now this will not work with cardstock, uh, so it's just, it's not going to happen. So I'm going to take some pinks and blues and reds. And the other thing you want to do is actually try to um, try to experiment with this technique because you want to find out if not every marker is the ink is going to run and move on your paper. So you want to check that, test that out first. But if you want to just play around with this process, you can do this and then you just wet it with water and let it dry and that's all there's to it. So you can see that you know some of the colors have marks and some don't. You can kind of like I said be careful how you move it. You don't want your colors to get too muddy. I like this swirling sensation so I am going to leave it and at this point I could tape down the corners and let it dry flat. So you can see that this third technique, it does work really well, but you just want to remember, keep in mind that you might scribble down a color and that color might not move that well with the water. And honestly, I don't know why that is. I'm gonna just dab up this up. I don't know why that happens. It's the pigments in some of the inks. Um, they, the, a lot of these pens are called water watercolor inks or water-based inks, but honestly some of them don't move too well when you apply them directly to the paper. So there, that is the third technique. The, the last thing I'm just going to show you is I'm going to just take my little cardstock. So remember we've been working with the watercolor paper. I'm going to take the, the cardstock piece it's, it's much whiter, look at the difference in color. It's much whiter and, you know, if I could find a really super white watercolor paper, I'd be quite happy. So then what you can do with something like this is, again, you can take a few colors onto your palette. 
And let's take that purple and this blue. I'm not going to put too much down. Um, maybe a bit of pink. So I'm just going to use this to create kind of a fun gift tag because you might wonder, well, what, what else can you do with these? So let's add our water. You see those nice droplets in there. And then I'm just going to put in or swipe in the bottom of my little tag. And that way I will create really a pretty, a pretty a watercolor tag with just the bottom colored. And then I can do calligraphy on this part here. So because I don't want to waste this, <laughs> I'm actually going to do this with a few tags and, and just sop it up. And this is another thing you can do, even if you're working with watercolor paper, you can have some of these tags on hand. See how pretty that is? And then you can mop up, instead of wasting and wiping away your watercolor papers, you can add them to these watercolor, um, sorry, these cardstock tags there. Okay, so of course, you know, what is the next step? The next step is putting down some calligraphy or hand lettering. Even if you don't do this, you can use stickers. And I mean, the sky's the limit as to what you can write. I have a couple of finished pieces here. I have this one, it's dried. And the other thing I wanted to mention is I try to use very smooth watercolor paper. It doesn't have much tooth because I do like to write with my pens on it and I do not want the um, pens to be damaged. So you can take a pen. I'll take this. Uh, this is a Tombo Funisuki twin tip. And I'll just write a, a few words to show you what, what I mean. Um, let's do... I'll do be gentle and kind. How about that? So I will speed this up so you don't have to be bored with this whole process. So there you have it. I hope you have a lot of fun creating calligraphy and hand lettering pieces with these watercolor backgrounds and thanks for watching.